So guys, when I was showing uh, Austin how to do the inside trip that I use and how I do it, he obviously knows how to do it, but the way that I do it, um, he was asking about once we hit the ground, because he's you know, been doing some jiu-jitsu for a bit uh, for the last couple of years, doing open mats and practicing that sort of thing. He was asking about a sequence from like the half guard that we're landing into. Uh, so I'm going to show him how to do that. And this could be useful to you guys if you want to learn how to use like half guard, how to pin someone there and get really tight in nogi so you can slow things down without the kimono. And I like as judo guys, we like the sort of pinning feel. So if you have any idea for like submissions that can sort of uh, capitalize on our like predilection for pinning, for, for, pinning? for yeah. pressure, even better. Cool. So let's check it out. So in the video that we did before where I was doing the inside trip, the Kochi Gake, um, I can start throwing that around for all you judo guys that watch me and be like, Julie, actually, I can use it too. Inside trip on the <laughs> Kochi Gake, all right? So we've got here, we've got in this position. So I'm getting into a half guard. Now for a lot of you guys watching jiu-jitsu, I've talked about this, this position recently. This is one of my favorite positions for passing, but slowing the game down. A lot of older guys in jiu-jitsu love the gi, and they say they love the gi the most because we have handles. You can do stuff without the gi, just like he's showing you no gi variations of judo, you just have to learn how to use the body, right? So once I get here, a couple things. One, I'm gonna keep this leg tucked under here nice and tight because otherwise you're gonna be put locked down and there's some different stuff, yeah, just like that. I'm gonna keep this leg tucked under. And then positioning wise, I'm gonna be focusing on putting my pressure right in this middle section of his core. So again, the abdominal muscles, the chest, they both have like the, the, the rib cage, they have some protective elements to it. But right here, you got that soft spot, so if I put it right there, oh. I get right there. Now I've got my pressure. To add the pressure that I want, I'm not gonna squeeze, I'm gonna extend my upper back. So I wanna basically try to flex my back together like I'm trying to pinch a penny between my shoulder blades and then push my chest down into them. Now the pinning part of it we were talking about, so check this out, we're gonna take our middle finger, put it into his armpit, and I pull the elbow, watch the angle here, I pull the elbow back. Oh, and I it's already choking. Right, now the reason why we do this in Jiu Jitsu is for you on the bottom, you wanna be on your side. I was noticing that you flattened me too, right? Yeah, this is the goal, because like if you're here in Jiu Jitsu, this allows you to like keep yeah. some space, and even if, like, let's say if you, were, if you were like, I don't want to do Jiu Jitsu, I want to play Judo, Once you can help you yeah. stand up, right? So I have to keep that pin, that shoulder pin, okay. okay? So once I get down, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get into a position here where I really overload this side, and if you try to get up to that shoulder, you're not able to. Now, most of the time in jiu-jitsu, guys are gonna have this arm tucked in tight because they don't wanna give up this underhook and they don't wanna give up the space. Now, letting you guys think about strategy, this is obviously, Austin can look at this later too. Mount is one of the best positions in jiu-jitsu. But a lot of people get here and they're like, I can't hold mount for anything. I have that problem. Okay, can't hold mount. Most of the time, the reason is, is that they don't do anything with the hands. So basically, they get here and this guy's got his hands together. Yeah. And most of the time in jiu-jitsu, we'll set up like a frame like so, where basically you push almost with your elbows right here. So like, just like, just like that. And they can oh. easily escape. Yeah, I, this happens to me and I always have to abandon because I feel like I'm going to lose it. That's it. And so what we're going to do is there are ways, once you're in mount, to isolate the arms. But we can think about it like ahead of time. Just like with you, when you're grip fighting, mm -hmm. this is grip fighting, right? Oh, when, when you're grip fighting, like you're fighting off the grip because you're thinking ahead of time, what's my takedown, what's my throw, what grips do I need? And before we get locked up, I'm gonna get that thing. Yeah. So from here, I know that I want this arm because if I have an arm, oh. you don't have your frames. Right. So, but you are protected. I'm trying to stay here. So how can I get you to reach out? So here's the oh, idea. I don't like that. So here's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. A lot of guys are gonna hold tight. I'm gonna push your knee down and I'm gonna slide the knee up. This is where we'll typically get it. A jiu-jitsu guy won't reach too early, but once we're threatening a passing the guard, I'm reaching to your knee. That's what you can What they'll do is they'll try to push us back in. Right, because you're, tr you're trying to slide over and yes. I want you back here. You got the idea. So basically, once I get here, you try to push that back in, and then now you've opened up space here that allows me to get this grip. You have a handle now. I've got a handle. Now, from here at this point, you'll typically pinch your knees together to hang onto your last bit, which is the ankle, and this is typically called quarter mount. To get this arm to go up, I'm not, I used to walk my hands when I was younger, but there's a much stronger way, which is essentially you're gonna do like a tricep kickback that you would do in the gym, like a tricep extension. I'm gonna lift this arm up. I'm pulling too, I'm trying to resist it. All right guys, so you might notice that the camera angles or whatever changed, that's because we had to switch cameras because the battery ran out, but back to it. I push this here and he has to make that decision. Am I gonna push this knee back in or am I gonna just give up the guard pass? Most jiu-jitsu guys will push it back in, so I go underneath. 
Now from there, I walk it up by using this tricep extension, tricep extension, and then the pass that I'll use, go ahead and lock your ankles together, is I will get my head up on the ground so I can tripod. This allows me to lift up and put butterfly hooks in. Mm. Boom, pry out, and go. So now, you're, you're walking up, uh, before you're trying to uh, get your butterfly like mount? So yeah, I, so the, the idea is I want to get my head on the ground because I need to get the, my weight off the legs. So if you think about like right now, if I'm here like this, I've got a lot of weight on my legs. I'm not going to be able to move them independently. But when I'm up like this, mm. now I can move yeah. around right. and they're not they're not bearing any weight. Makes so sense. that's the idea. Now from here, I'm going to show you I'm trying to you practice on these. First off, from a positional standpoint, you cannot build your frames together because you don't have both of your arms. Mm -hmm. So you're constantly in threat of a submission. Yeah. So it puts you from a situation of being able to like go, okay, how am I going to escape to, oh man, what's like, yeah. what's, well, I've got to defend all this, right? right? So the idea, and again, we can go into all kinds of detail, but we walk this up here and I want to get my head to the other side. Now, most people, when they do arm triangles, where they mess up with it, and if you if you get to an arm triangle and you're like, man, I just can't quite finish it. That's me, I feel like I have to squeeze with all my like power. Then I guarantee them these a couple, a couple adjustments will probably help fix that. Number one is that when we get here, we're probably a little too high initially on the chin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push my butt down, and almost like if we're doing like a down dog in yoga, or like where we're like, not down dog, but um, what do they call it, where you're almost like the, uh, I almost call it a Hindu push up, like where you're basically diving down and you're driving your shoulder underneath. So, like right here, I squat down and I drive my shoulder. It's already so tight. Watch this from the side, guys. So, like we push down and I slide my chest up right there. So, once you get the feel for that, once that shoulder's in place, you stop. You don't go any higher, okay? Now, the way that the arm triangle works is we have this arm cutting off the, the or putting the pressure in this carotid. And on the other side, it's the shoulder pushing in there. So what I'm gonna do is first off, my choking arm is gonna be thumb down or hand down to get the brachial radialis to flare up so I can squeeze a little tighter. And then from there, hand grips, they can either be palm to palm or an S grip. But again, choking arms palm down. Now to make the shoulder pressure on this side a little bit tighter, I'm gonna go ear to ear, temple to temple, whatever you wanna think about. But basically once I get here and I get everything in place, I get my grip and I'm gonna be relatively light on this one here. I push this here. Now, to dismount, what that's gonna look like is I will put my forehead on the ground again so that I can move my legs, right? Same idea. We're here, hook, and I'm down. Now, when I get ready to go, I'm gonna sink my weight down and I squeeze in tight. That, it, that feels like I know mine, like feels like when I'm going 110% squeezing. Uh -huh. What percent were you squeezing? I mean, when I'm, when you're practicing Just there, because it felt tight. 20. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like there's not a lot of squeeze. If you do all that other stuff fine, it doesn't require much squeeze. The squeeze will be necessary when the person's really defending, but when you're actually just drilling it and trying to get the feeling of the choke, there really shouldn't be a lot of squeeze if you get everything in place, right? right? So again, we're focused on getting the shoulder underneath the neck. We have a deep grip with the arm. Um, and then from there, we, we can put the head-to-head -head position, temple-to-temple. -to -temple. So try it out. We'll go through that whole sequence there. You can I love this because I've, I've looked at both mount and arm triangles thinking I should be able to do this because we have chokes, but I, I think I'm too high. And for you from the standpoint of passing the guard, you're probably initially not going to have the, like, the ability to just simply pass someone's guard, but you can probably just shut this leg down and come down to half guard. Right, right, oh, right. right. Yeah. So this isn't that complicated. Mm -hmm. Right now, let's go chest to chest here. So chest to chest, a sweet spot. So I was too it, high. So you're, you're thinking about aiming this here. So sternum for your solar plexus. Yes. Right there, there yeah. we go. Now this is one of the, and this is one of the best parts about using like half guard as like a, a slower position to pass is when you're in the position, you're I'm bearing all of your weight. Your weight's low, like loaded on me. Like pinch a penny. And it, it yeah, it pinches the penny right here. The shoulder blades as you're here, and what that does is for me on the bottom. I'm having to support your weight. You're impeding on my breathing, yeah. and I'm just laying here. Now, the get your middle finger into the armpit so, of mine. You said, what was this called again? The, sh the shoulder of justice. I love that. Shoulder of justice. This, this is what I'm shoulder. looking for. This feels like a gi again. We'll yeah, get in there. it very much is like a gi grip, right? Oh yeah. All right, yeah. I'm back. Now, and like for you, you're a, you're a relatively small guy in comparison to my weight, but like you've got that judo pit, you can feel the, the judo pitting put, put it, the pressure. This handle kind of, t I feel like it takes me back into my world a bit. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. there we go. So okay. now you're in that pinning position. Now, again, I'm going to have this arm here most of the time because I don't want to give this up because this is a jiu jitsu right. guy. Underhooks feel uncomfortable. So I'm here. You start to push my knee down and drive your knee to mount. 
I'm like, oh no. Oh. So I go to push. Okay. Because I want to get there. Now that I've exposed the underhook, yeah. now get underneath there. I feel, yeah, there. I feel like this. Now, now put sir. your weight, like, like a drive your knee to the mount. Like, put your knee on the ground. This knee? Yeah, because you want to be here. Oh, okay, so this, al this allows you to now post here and walk right. it up. Get up, walk it up. Now, when you walk it up, put your arm down and then put your palm on the mat. Now, like a tricep extension, lock this out as it lifts. Got it. Take the space. Walk oh. it up, take more space. And we go just like that. So you're just walking it up. Now, once we're here, we won't go for the arm triangle yet because we're up here high. You just okay. get your hands close together. Put your forehead up over my so right there. Now, this allows you to move your legs freely. Right back to mount? Yeah, we go to mount. Oh, okay, let me show you one more time. So, so here, we're half guard, trying to block here, anticipate, down. Knee on the mat, right knee on the mat. Right knee on the mat, oh, right. You want that base here. Hop in. And then you're right here and you're walking up here. Okay. Now, put, now right here, I want your forehead up over my head, it's the center line. Oh, got it, that's, so, a, that's big for me. It's right here. Okay. That's it. Now from there, you can lift your hips up, pry, slide up. Now from there, with mouth, here's a couple ideas. Typically, I'm gonna play heels to butt. Take both your heels, put them underneath my butt. So that's what I like to hold most of the time. That said, if the person's getting ready to bridge, there's a grapevine. Put the grapevine in. The grapevine helps to stop the bridge. Okay, so if I notice you're about to bridge, I'm gonna switch? Yes, but Got the it. problem is with the grapevine, put the, I can fight for the inside space, mm -hmm. and if you lose that inside space, it's very easy for me to escape. This is why I always lose mouth. This is exactly the same. But this one, heels to butt, holds inside space a lot better, but again, you just want to be mindful about. Now from here, we start to walk the arm up. Now I get my arm. Arm right across. Now right now we're too high, so we're gonna we're gonna dive back. And then go on the knee. And then, oh. so even though I didn't pass to, uh, I, I kept mounting. It was still tight. Yeah, I mean, I I, I could fight that, but I can just feel like my my hands are. Okay, I'll pop, jump right? a nice yeah. So we're here. So when we're here, him down. palm down. Okay, and then from here, lightly. What I want you to think about: put your palms together. You're gonna put your forehead down to the ground, and then we're gonna dismount. I was so, on 20%. Well, now. I know, so it's, like, it's just like one of those things where like, you're so deep in there, um, and I've got muscle and all that other stuff around my neck, and, and so it just, it hits really quickly. Whoa. So I want you to do it again, but Slowly. we're gonna go, go like, don't even put any pressure on it, we're just gonna get the position, then we'll okay. add the pressure at the end. So I'm high first, for so head high, above yours. You're gonna dive down. Now, you're, you're, don't go any higher, stop here. Okay. There's no advantage of going any higher. Okay. Now, once you're here, you're just gonna keep your head position where it is. What I want you to think about doing is putting your forehead to the ground, go ahead and get your hands together, okay? Now, put your forehead to the ground, dismount. Now, kick off to the side, left knee in the hip. This leg is gonna kick out, but I want you to keep your right, that's just perfect. Put your right leg out and put your right toes into that. That's sick. I wasn't even really squeezing that time, I was just falling. Yeah, so the, the idea is that we're doing two things. We're One, we can obviously ratchet it up, but we're using the bulk of our body weight, lay down. So really what's happening is, if I wanna add pressure going down, if I'm gonna do that, I don't wanna like, let's like if I was gonna be in like side control, I don't wanna lay here like side to side with you, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be across your body. Oh. So if I'm gonna do this, if I wanna add pressure down into your neck, I wanna have my leg out to the side, so this way, what really is going on here without, I'm not even gonna do this here, is what's happening is, is like right here, I can pressure up here. Oh, yeah. You feel the pressure there, I have a lot of pressure going down. Now we add this in, and so I'm tight, and then from here I just use my, my body pressure, oh, my and we can squeeze. That is crazy, because like, I feel like that's the tightest arm triangle I felt, and it didn't feel like you were squeezing, you were just in the exact right place. Right, and, and again, this allows us to, with the hand grips being like this, like a lot of people like to do like the, the bicep grip, but like if the guy's really big, you're not gonna be able to bicep grip. Or if you have short arms, you can't bicep grip. By using a, a gable or a S grip, you can pretty much do any body type, whether you're long, short arm, whatever, it works. Um, but that's like a great simple sequence. It's ultra safe because if you get to mount and you go for the arm triangle, it doesn't work. You're still in a great pinning position. Um, and you're just doing it like so slowly where you're essentially cooking the person yeah. until they start to make mistakes. I love that. And you can hit it right from the, Kochi Gake to mm -hmm. shot. That's right. That's, that's so, I can't wait to try it. And that kind of goes along with your idea because if you guys think about judo, again, they don't have as much time to work on the ground. Mm -hmm. So everything has to be like with the thought process of, 
what am I going to do next? Like, how? What, what's my next submission? Because I have to move quickly, and so this could this will be different because you still have more time to work, but at least it'll give you an idea where, all right, I'm hitting the ground. Mm -hmm. What am I working for? It's like I was doing the checkers version. You were doing the chess version. There we go. <laughs> so again, guys, um, doing some videos here with Austin. If you guys want to check him out, uh, Bad Boy Medicine on Instagram. Um, I'll put his information down in the links below. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys.